Well, welcome to online worship with the community of Faith of Alamance Lutheran Church in Alamance, North Carolina. Hi, I'm Pastor Ron Philobom. The beautiful fall colored leaves that we have seen in recent weeks are giving way to, well, no leaves at all. When the trees are bare, we will wait for spring when they will be full of life once again. In our readings today, we hear of a day when Christ will come again in the final resurrection. Although the life we know will end one day, there is newness of life to come. The more we see the last day approaching, the more important it is to meet together to provoke one another to love. So come along with me as we listen to the prelude and prepare ourselves to listen closely to the Holy Spirit speaking to us through God's Word and the message. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away from the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways and free us to serve those in need. Amen. Well, God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus sake and remembers them no more so lift up your heads and your hearts yours is the kingdom of God amen well let us pray almighty God your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes to us from the 12th chapter of Daniel. It begins with the first verse. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. 
There shall be a time of anguish such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 16. We'll read responsively by whole verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a, a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because God is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our second reading comes to us today from the 10th chapter of Hebrews. It begins with the 11th verse. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them in their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened up for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart, a true heart, in full assurance of faith with our hearts, sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast. Hold fast to the confession of our hope, to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love 
and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but in encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. Our holy gospel for this morning comes to us from the 13th chapter of Mark. It begins with the first verse. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. The nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For the troubled heart, for the joyful heart, for the angry heart, may I invite you to bow your heads as we come before God in prayer and inspiration. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, when I look at large, impressive old buildings with huge blocks of limestone or granite stacked one on top of another, I think about my great-grandpa Robertson. He came to this country from Bunny Rig, Scotland, and was a stonemason. I imagine I've shared his story with you before. The key was that he saw these great blocks of stone as something of purpose. And when he cut those large stones, they could be used to create incredible things like buildings and roadways and parks. We can look at these large stones and marvel at them as a creation that God has made and the beauty they provide. Well, 38 years ago, my wife and I took a trip to New York City to visit her brother. While he was working, we would tour the big city. I wondered if my great-grandpa had a hand in cutting the stones that would be used for those large buildings. We marveled at the engineering of these incredible structures. However, there was something that, well, we missed noticing. For example, who gave the iron workers, the crane operators, and other craftsmen, not to mention the engineers, architects, and let's not forget the stone cutters, the ability to build such impressive structures. You see, in our gospel, the, di the disciples were behaving much like we were as tourists. Yet Jesus wanted his disciples to know that there is no stone so big that cannot be moved by the very one who made them. So when was the last time you looked at a magnificent structure and gave thanks to God for the gifts God gave the hands who collaborated together 
to build it. Can you imagine the conversation that may develop the next time you head to the beach and ask a complete stranger, wow, God has created a magnificent pond here, right? See, as the disciples walk out of the temple in Jerusalem, Jesus paused and looked back at the temple and predicted, do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone will be left on another. To the disciples, this was bedrock. Nothing could bring down these walls. Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. And they said to Jesus, the smallest stones in the structure weighed two to three tons. Many of them weighed 50 tons. The largest existing stone part of the wailing wall is 12 meters in length and three meters high, and it weighs hundreds of tons. The stones were so immense that neither mortar or any other binding material was used in between the stones. Their stability was attained by the great weight of the stones. The walls towered over Jerusalem, over 400 feet in one area. Inside the four walls was 45 acres of bedrock mountain, shaved flat. And during Jesus' day, a quarter of a million people could fit comfortably within the structure. No sports structure in America today could even come close. We stand in wonder at these structures while forgetting who created the smallest grain of sand. And no matter the biggest formidable storm that we face, who has the power to calm it with a single word? Peace. Amen.
Let us join together in confessing our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you show us the path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm in religious spaces. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell of and enact your, your reconciling love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our ruler, you write your law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all elected leaders and officials to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters, by fires out west, the flooding around this nation, and others in the disasters in Haiti. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, and the first responders who support them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sheltering God. You share in our experiences and struggles. Bless all who live with any mental or physical disability. Inspire creative communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable. We lift up the efforts of Lutheran Services Carolina and the Be the Light campaign. Empower us to financially support our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we give you thanks for healthcare workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and all who long for healing in any way. Ashley, Barbara, Linda, Joe, Sally, Bucky, Ruth, Bob, Melba, Carolyn, Betty, El Ray, Jereen, Edmise, Denise, Mark, Derek, Normita, Jill, Rose, Graham, Mari, Roseanne, Sandy, Chad, George, Lillian, Layton, Cheryl, Faye, Annie, Nathaniel, Steve, Tim, Sean, Martha, Tony, Bob, David and Sherry, Carl and June, Lynn, Emma, Aaron, Joan, Cadence, Gary. Support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of justice. We praise you for the feeding ministries and for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bless our ushers and our musicians and our readers, communion assistants, ministry team coordinators, 
continue to nurture the leadership and the ministries of this congregation, especially our ministry team leaders like Cindy and Bonnie, Joanne, Kirk, Lisa, Roy, Susan, and Ted. Send your Holy Spirit to inspire others who will answer your call to also serve on these ministry teams. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Empowering God, you have said, let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. We place before you the names of the youth of our community of faith and ask that you bless them abundantly. Aaron, Amelia, Angus, Carly, Clayton, Creston, Daisy, Eleanor, Eli, Ella, Ellie, Emma, Greg, Hunter, James, Jared, Jessica, Joan, John, and Josie May, Kaya, Katie Rose, Leanne, Layton, Lily, Luke, Marilyn, Max, Megan, Molly, Noah, Owen, Paige, Sam, Sarah, Sarah Jo, Sophie, and Tabitha. Empower us to consistently invite them to participate in this fellowship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. God offers Christ to the world. The bread and wine become Christ's own presence. By God's grace, we are recipients and also participants in this gift. But you return to God's mission here and throughout the world through your cash and checks is what God has first given you through all your own giftedness. We invite you to place your tithes and offerings in the brass plates in the entrances of our sanctuary. And you may also visit our website at alamancelutheranchurch.org to participate through digital financial giving. And just click the Give button. We thank you for your generosity, which enables us to follow through with the great commission that Jesus gives us in Matthew 28, 19, to go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, you walk beside us each day. Please accept these gifts from our first fruits to empower this ministry to thrive and grow. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Well, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. And then he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. So come. With this bread and with this cup, we remember Christ's life among us. His association with outcasts, his eating with sinners, his healing of the sick, his care for the poor. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit upon us and upon the bread and wine that we who share in this meal may become a holy communion, the body of Christ in the world. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Jesus Christ, which has been shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. Well, sisters and brothers, both your work and your rest are in God. Will you endeavor to pattern your life on the Lord Jesus Christ in gratitude to God and in service to others at morning and evening, at work and at play, all the days of your life? If so, please respond, I will. And I ask God to help and guide me. Almighty God, by the power of the Spirit, you have knit these servants into one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with favor upon them in their commitment to serve in Christ's name. Give them bold courage and confidence, patience and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian witness to the world and a service to others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.